This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Today I saw Barbie, the latest from Greta Gerwig. This was not only my most anticipated movie of the year, but it's also everybody else's. My theater was full of people dressed up in pink. It felt like 2006. I, I loved it. Me personally, I don't have a huge connection to Barbie, but I do love, love, love Greta Gerwig. She is one of my favorite writers and directors, and to see her dive into such unique yet challenging source material had me intrigued. Yes, you heard me. Barbie is challenging source source material. No, I'm not talking about the complexities of Barbie as a character. That, that's one thing, and that's actually what I thought Gerwig would do just fine with. No, it's the fact that it's based on such a popular product, and that Mattel was directly involved. I was a little worried going into this movie for that reason, based on just the trailers alone. At least this year, I'm so used to an exciting and unique idea turning out to be just fine, not offensively bad, not amazing, just somewhere in the middle. When companies get involved, filmmakers have to play it extremely safe. Driving people to the theater is hard enough, so that's also a reason studios might lean towards something safe and good enough, sometimes even less than good enough, over something truly strange. And I was worried Barbie would be that, I, and I was extra worried knowing how much I love both Gerwig and Bombeck. I, I didn't want to see them flop. And you know what? I am an idiot. I don't know why or how I could ever doubt these two, because Barbie is a blast and I really liked it. Barbie is about what happens when Barbie must go to the real world with Ken and what happens when the stuff in the real world starts affecting stuff in the Barbie world. The film starts with the 2001 reference from that first teaser, which then leads directly into Barbie going about one of her perfect days in Barbie land. It is some of the most enjoyable filmmaking I've seen all year. Every new detail, every new character, every new prop, every new gag only made my grin wider. I was overwhelmed with joy watching that opening sequence unfold. Think about the everything is awesome scene from the Lego movie, but pink and even happier. While I'm on it, this feels like a good time to just gush about the production design of this movie because Jesus Christ. Anytime I'm in Barbie land, it does genuinely feel like I'm in a toy world. The amount of detail put into the color of these sets, to the textures, even the tiniest of props, it's nothing short of masterful. I haven't seen a contemporary film actually make me believe in movie magic like this since La La Land. Greta Gerwig cites Jacques Demy and Jacques Tati as influences for the world, and that is crystal clear and just how playful and filled in all of these sets feel. Even the Mattel office scene, that especially feels like something out of playtime, and it's the first time I've seen someone come close to what Tati was doing there. Yes, even closer than Wes Anderson. And you guys know me, I'm a huge Jacques Tati fan, and that just, you know, to see this made me so happy. The cinematography by Rodrigo Prieto is stunning. I promise it looks so much better on a big theater screen than it does online. The colors really pop, and all of the traveling sequences look beautiful. Ugh, everything in the weird Barbie house, it's just so much fun. It doesn't feel like they're just throwing colors at the wall. It all feels like very intentional where they put the colors and how they design these sets and it just looks great. From a technical standpoint, I mean it when I say I think this is one of the best looking movies of the year. It's crazy to finally walk away from a big movie saying, yeah, they probably stretched the budget as far as they could with this one. Because the film starts at 100 with its artificiality, I found it hard to believe it would ever reach a point where I'd be able to, you know, pretend to empathize with Barbie as a character. She's just so ridiculous ridiculous in the first scene that I'm like, I don't feel myself ever connecting to this character. But not only does it reach this point, it reaches this point within like the first 30 minutes. That's just weird. It's just it, to, to get to the emotional core of the film that quick is ridiculous. But that's just the Greta Gerwig touch, man. I don't know if it's the music she uses, the performances she gets out of her actors, or just the simplicity of some of her scenes, but her movies just make me cry, and Barbie is no exception. Again, I don't have a personal connection to Barbie. The most personal I've ever felt to a Gerwig film was Lady Bird and the way it romanticizes the places we grow up in. Her work is mostly focused on women and the experience of being a woman. Barbie is definitely the most accessible and blunt example of this, with there even being a feminist monologue at one point that feels like Gerwig's speaking directly to the audience. And this is all to say that for as artificial and as non-human a good portion of this film is, there is a hell of a lot in here to connect to. It has shit to say, and that's deeply refreshing to see coming from a movie like this, from the Barbie movie. Let's talk a little bit about performances, which certainly contribute to the success of this film's emotional core. Margot Robbie is incredible, plain and simple. At this point, she's just so good in everything that I'm like, yeah, she, she did it, she did it again. For what could be a pretty one-noted performance that borders on feeling repetitive and and annoying, she takes the character into some really interesting directions. Her more dramatic moments sell it, and the last 20 minutes specifically, I fully believe she was treating this like the most important movie she's ever been in, which was great to see. Ryan Gosling, um, 
what do we even need to say here? Listen, I've been on the Gosling train. I've been saying this, that he's one of the best actors alive. I'm glad the rest of the world has caught up, and I'm glad this is the role that did it for him. This, it's like he was born to play this. I mean, come on, son. The abs, the smile, the singing, the dancing, all the fight choreography. Guys, he is the full package, and I say this with complete sincerity. I think he should have an Oscar for this. I know there will be performances somewhere down the line that top it for me. Maybe some really dramatic stuff. Robert Downey Jr. was great in Oppenheimer, blah, 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 blah. But I just want to see him up there. I want to see Ryan Gosling get an award for playing the role he was born to play. This is his Kendall Roy. I mean, it's literally, you know, it's cat, it's, you know. While we're talking to actors who haven't been in much lately and deserve more love, I, I do want to mention Michael Sarah. If I related to any character in this movie, it was him. I am Alan deep down and that's okay. I'm comfortable with that. I love being Alan, it's fine. Some other performances I liked include Issa Rae, just perfect comedic timing, Will Ferrell, who is good as always, and Kate McKinnon, who I'll admit, I usually don't find that funny. I, I thought she was actually pretty great in this. She hisses at one point and it got me. I did a I did a chuckle. I mean, that's the other thing, right? We can talk about how the film effortlessly navigates the complexities of Barbie's effect on how women view themselves, but the film is also just uh, really funny. Maybe it's because Little Women wasn't a full-blown comedy, but I forgot Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach are both some of the funniest writers out there. Jokes are flying at you left and right in this movie. It's a lot, and I can see the density of jokes being exhausting to some people, but personally, that's how I like it, and I was having a great time. There is some stuff I wasn't crazy about. I do think the film kind of takes a dip in the middle of its runtime, and by dip, I mean it literally feels like... <laughs> a car commercial in the middle of the damn movie. Listen, if some blatant product placement is what it takes for some of these ideas to come to life, I'll take it. I won't judge. I'm usually not snobby about stuff like that, but damn if this wasn't just a wee bit distracting for me. It would cut to just the most random shots of the car driving, like mid-conversation. But you know, all that said, I hope Greta Gerwig got a nice free car out of that. In general, I do think the more time they spend outside of Barbie land, the more it lost me. But thankfully, that's such a small part of the film in the grand scheme of things that I can't really complain too hard. That final dance number with Ken was good enough to make up for some of the weaker moments. When I think about how I would defend Barbie if, God forbid, I ever came across a Barbie hater, I start feeling like a walking contradiction. What I find this movie does best is how fun it is, how it's blatantly sugary, it's like shoving my face with candy. But it's different than that of other cheaply made blockbusters from this year, the, the other candy, like I mentioned earlier, where I still come out feeling kind of unsatisfied. The difference between Barbie and other movies movies where you can say, just turn your brain off, is that this one is full. It's it's like a child who is so excited to tell you all the things she has to say, and all of them are funny and interesting. It's colorful and jam-packed and dense and, and actually has some shit to say. To walk out of a nearly two hour long movie wanting more, knowing there could have been more, it says quite a bit. So in conclusion, I loved the Barbie movie. I thought it was great. Is it perfect? No. But to see a movie of this size where it feels like the filmmakers actually cared about what they were making that doesn't fit the cookie cutter style of so many blockbusters, well, it just feels amazing. Not to mention the fact that this is a capital C comedy and it'll likely be one of the biggest movies of the year. I mean, don't get me started on how happy that makes me. Anyway, I'll probably be talking about Barbie more down the line as it is one of my favorite movies of the year. But for now, I'll leave it at that. Fellas, she's done it again. Thanks for watching. Go watch the Barbie movie and form your own opinion. And before you head out, I would love to thank this week's sponsor, Squarespace, the best place to build a website and make that idea of yours happen. They have something called Fluid Engine, a next generation website design system that allows you to customize every design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. If you're trying to get into film and you, you want to become a filmmaker, one of the most important things to do is create a portfolio. And Squarespace has all the tools to make that portfolio look amazing and to also help make that process just that much easier. You can host video content, organize your video library, and showcase your content on beautiful video pages, as well as sell access to your videos with member areas. To make that entire process that much easier, they have an asset library, which allows you to upload, organize, and access all your content from one place. It's super helpful. Go to squarespace.com to start your free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash karsten to get 10% off of your first purchase.